Well, boys, today is the day we finally paint the Honda Civic project car. If you guys have been following the build, you guys know I previously got a major run in the primer. We went ahead and fixed that, we fixed all the problems with the primer. And well, now it's time to shoot base and clear. I'm going to show a little bit of what I do to prepare for a paint job in the garage. And it all starts with my filtration system. Typically, I like to break down the uh, air filter or my air filtration system. This one in specific is a motor guard. It's real easy. Just unscrew the cap and look inside and see how the filter is doing, making sure that there's no water saturation or uh, oil contaminants inside. That's basically the first step because this could lead to fish eyes in the paint job. And the way things are going with this paint job um, previously, um, I've had a lot of uh, defects, so we're going to try our best here to uh, make sure that we have a, a fighting chance and trying to get the, the best paint job possible um, in the least uh, suitable environment. Another little small procedure that I like to take is checking my spray guns. So I'm going to be checking my uh, Tecna Pro Light, which is basically my base coat at this point and i'm also going to be checking my dv1 clear coat gun so we're going to start with the tecna and basically what i like to do is take the air cap off um, and check to see if there's any dried up paint or any remnants of anything that's inside um, you could see a little bit of the redness from uh, shooting base coat with this but honestly nothing that's really going to affect the uh, paint job i'll still probably just spray some uh, spray gun cleaner through this thing just to kind of get those remnants uh, out but uh, really i didn't see anything that was worth really breaking down the gun and and cleaning it all out uh, the same thing with the dv1 the dv1 is typically my clear coat gun so i like to make sure that there's nothing in the clear coat gun inside you guys could see that we have a painted roof and the quarter panel is primer, but we have a nice separation between the two. Obviously, you don't want uh, more base coat and clear coat landing on the roof. So what I like to do is clean off this area where, where molding would normally sit. And we clean out this area because we are going to be putting um, what's called 3M soft edge foam masking tape. And what that is, is just basically a foam tape that creates a soft edge uh, instead of having like a hard line a hard tape line uh, this will actually create a soft edge and it's a good transition between uh, something that's been uh, painted previously and something that you're going to paint so this is what i'm actually going to be using and this is actually the perfect size for it so what i like to do is i start off by taping off the adjacent panel that we don't want any paint on and then I start to apply our soft edge uh, tape. One thing to note, you don't want to stretch this foam tape. Um, it could lead to uh, issues uh, with the foam tape actually peeling. So uh, in this case, however, it's kind of trapped in that cavity, so it really doesn't go anywhere. Uh, but still, you just want to make sure that um, you get a nice uh, adhesion of that tape and it doesn't end up peeling and you end up painting something that um, you didn't want paint on to begin with. So now that we have the foam tape installed, you can see what it looks like. It looks really clean and we're going to be able to paint our parts separately without getting uh, any overspray on the other parts that we don't want paint on. Also went ahead and did the trunk and uh, other areas as well to keep any of the overspray out from uh, underneath that trunk when we go to paint the, uh, the quarter panel. Next, we're gonna grab our 3M Automotive Performance Masking Tape. I don't know what exactly the performance part means, but I just know that you always wanna use automotive grade uh, tape for this next little project. So what we're doing is we're gonna start back masking. And if you don't know what back masking is, um, it's a little self-explanatory, but basically what we're doing is we're grabbing our piece of tape and we're taping the back side so that the sticky side of the tape ends up uh, towards you or, or facing you. 
instead of taping something down where the adhesive is actually facing away from you. So in this case, we're just back masking this quarter glass uh, cavity and also we're gonna end up doing the door and other parts as well. Usually when I back mask, I like to separate my pieces because if I mess up, I could just peel that one piece off and then fix it. Or sometimes if the back masking is not really sticking that well, if it's one solid piece, it can peel much easier than if it was a couple different parts. So that kind of helps a little bit too. And then not only that, if there's some tight areas, um, it's a little bit easier normally to uh, apply tape with a small piece than if you were to apply a big piece of tape in this one conspicuous area. So as you notice, I did the whole side of this car, which is the quarter glass, the door, the underside of the uh, side skirts. I went ahead and covered parts of the bumper um, and then also parts of the trunk and also inside the wheel well where, where we're going to cover the wheel so it doesn't get painted on. I even went ahead and covered our gas cap and our gas cap, um, I don't know, trim, I guess you could call it. I separated these two into two different pieces. So that way when they come together, they're all sealed together almost as one unit, but I can remove one part of it. It makes it easier to tape up. So the next part of the procedure is to put plastic on. This is a 3M treated plastic. The treated plastic actually is, uh, well, treated on one side and it helps to uh, basically have paint adhere to the plastic so that it doesn't flake off. But it's also good for little bits of dust and trash that may have uh, landed on the plastic and it helps to keep that dust down as well. And also for bugs and I will show you an example of that later on. So this is what the car looks like uh, covered in plastic. And I also created a paper skirt um, to keep uh, any paint from going under the car. And I'm going to start to begin grabbing a razor blade and trimming all that plastic um, and uh, then taping down that plastic down into the car and getting uh, all the areas that we want covered in plastic and then all the areas that we don't want covered in plastic, we're going to go ahead and remove it. So we're basically just trimming out that plastic. I'm going to let the video run just a little bit so you guys can see uh, what it takes to actually trim this plastic down. It's really not that difficult, um, but it can be uh, tedious at times. After a few minutes of uh, putting plastic down, this is what the car ends up looking like, all covered up. We have our wheel covered, parts of our bumpers covered, uh, the rest of the car, obviously areas where we didn't want uh, paint going inside the car, like the quarter glass and the door. I'm going to go ahead and grab some Kovacs uh, sanding paper. This is uh, K800. Basically, I found some areas that needed a little bit more refinement. So I'm just going to grab uh, a sheet and grab um, a little bit of my Scotch-Brite pad and go over some of the areas that need a little bit more refinement. There were some uh, bare metal spots that I ended up um, spraying a little bit of primer. So this is why I'm grabbing my sandpaper and just smoothing out those areas without burning through, of course, down to the bare metal. So just real quick, little uh, sand, really, really nice and soft. That's why I'm using a high grit sandpaper just to kind of level off that primer so that we don't have a uh, different uh, texture in certain areas. There seems to be a big controversy with tack cloths. Some people like them and some people don't. I am one of those people that like to use tack cloths. Also went ahead and picked up some SemPrep SemSolve. And uh, I also picked up these Kirkland microfiber towels. There are some people that suggest that they use microfiber towels as a tack cloth. And I will show you some examples of why you don't want to use that. They are very good for cleaning. I will say that. So any grease or contaminants that you might have uh, or fingerprints or oils from your hands on the panel, microfiber towels are good for cleaning, but they're not really good for final tack. 
And I'll show you some examples of why I don't recommend them for final tack, especially new microfiber towels. You do want to clean these or wash these uh, in the washer um, so that it can get rid of any like uh, lints or anything like that. But if you are using a brand new microfiber towel, um, you don't want to use it for final tack. And I'll show you real quick uh, with a flashlight. So I'll go on the side of the panel and you can see right away that the microfiber fiber towel will actually leave little small pieces of lint and trash. It's not really good for final tack and you can see still have some dust right there and a couple other areas as well. Now, if you guys remember me saying that the plastic is good for catching bugs, check this out. So you guys can actually see that the treated plastic um, actually sometimes creates a static charge. And what will end up happening is bugs will actually stick to the plastic. And normally they get caught by their wings because their wings um, are very attractive to static. And uh, <laughs> as they move around, their, their little wings get stuck into the treated plastic, either by static or by the treatment that's on the plastic itself. And it helps to keep your job cleaner uh, without getting so much bugs. So normally, um, and there's another bug right there, normally I'll leave that overnight and catch as many bugs as possible. We also are gonna use some prep all, and like I said, some SemSolve from a company called Sem. I'm gonna do an additional wipe down with prep all, and this is just gonna further clean the, the panel. You can never be too clean, so always having a, a clean uh, cleaning solvent is always good. They're, they make waterborne ones and also solvent-based ones. Um, it just really depends on the types of contaminants that you're going to have on the surface, but typically you'll use a waterborne and a solvent uh, cleaning agent, but I don't have any waterborne, so normally I'm just using uh, either a Prepol or a Kempsolve. All right, so in an effort to keep dust down, I like to use the 3M dust control spray. Uh, it does say for professional use only, but let's just say that's a whole crock of shit. Um, I try to use whatever I can to make sure I try to get the cleanest jobs possible. And this is kind of just the way I do it. So what I'm going to do is just spray dust control spray on all the areas that um, are basically just bare concrete. And we have dust on the uh, on the floor. So as I walk around, uh, I will spray some dust control spray down on the floor. This will wet the floor. Uh, some people prefer water, but um, I have come to realize that 3M dust control spray, uh, even when it dries, it still creates a tacky surface and will actually continue picking up dust or keeping dust down um, for much further than water. Once water evaporates, that trash that was on the floor can get picked up again. But with dust control spray, it actually stays down even when it's dry. So here I'm just showing the materials I'm using and also the filters that I use uh, when, after I mix uh, paint and I put it in a paint cup. Um, you always want to use those filters. Next, I'm going to go ahead and tack, tack rag the whole entire car. This is to pick up any dust or remaining lint from our microfiber towels and just go around and try to pick up as much dust as possible or any bugs that might have just landing and are chilling there. Um, just try to pick up as much dust as possible. This is a garage, so we are going to end up um, having some dust in the, in the job, but we try our best efforts to try to get the cleanest job possible. So unfortunately, uh, I did not re press record on our first coat. This is a very, very light coat of uh, base. So what we did, what we did is just sprayed our uh, very light coat of base just to make sure we're not getting any reactions or anything that's gonna uh, end up kicking us in the butt later on. So this is why I like to uh, put down a light coat of base because well, previously we did get some paint reactions um, using uh, a 2K over a 1K product. So at this point, just spraying a light coat of base coat just kind of ensures that uh, we don't get any more paint reactions. So now what I'm going to end up doing is um, opening up our fluid. I like to use about two and a half on my Technopro light. 
and uh, and then shake up my base coat. Also use a tack rag in between coats. Some people don't recommend this, um, but I do just because I'm in a garage. I tend to get dust in between coats quite often, so I try to use my tack uh, cloth into picking up any uh, dust that might have landed in between coats. So now I'm pretty much setting up the gun, setting our pressure, and begin to spray. Typically when I spray, um, I'll do like medium wet coats. I don't go full wet, but I don't also go like too dry either. Um, I found that with this particular paint, um, the way it dries and usually due to my environment, I have to paint it kind of like a medium wet because if I go too light, it's just too dry. And if I go too wet, it takes forever to dry and could lead to problems later on. So typically I'll just do a medium wet coat and that seems to work fine uh, for my environment and um, the layout of the paint. So first uh, full coat actually came out pretty good. Not really seeing any real issues at this point or any big issues. So everything's looking nice. And uh, well, I'm starting to get a little excited. Um, I do notice that uh, as I look down and get low, I could see some areas where I've missed. So we're going to go ahead and cover those in the next round of paint. Uh, one thing I do suggest is gloves, but unfortunately I cannot find any gloves in my local stores. One little trick I like to use is something, a product called Tubbo Towels. It's uh, cleaning wipes and I gotta say these are like some of the best towels I have ever used. I got sponsored by them on my TikTok and uh, well, I'm not sponsored on YouTube now, but I will say that these by far are my favorite towels. Um, they just work really well on removing paint and other just contaminants. And I highly suggest you guys give it a try. Um, it does work better if the paint is a little bit fresh. So, you know, within, I would say, 20 minutes of uh, getting paint on your hands, uh, it should be able to remove it quite easily. And you can see uh, how much cleaner my hands are. And uh, there's still some here and there, but honestly... Uh, a vast improvement to what it was before. All right, so once again, going around our areas and checking to make sure we have coverage. I'm pointing out some of the areas that we need to uh, address. So um, sometimes you just don't get low enough. And with the amount of space that I have in the garage, it's kind of hard to uh, to get down into those lower areas. Uh, but you just, you got to do it or else you're going to end up with uh, areas that are too light or don't have uh, appropriate coverage. So here's how our base coat is laying out. It's actually looking real nice. Not too much dust at this point. I'm not seeing uh, a major dust or anything like that. So um, everything is looking good. The base coat is laying down nice. And uh, so far, no issues and uh, no dust, so that's always a, a plus. Uh, there was a little bit of dust in the jams and a little bit on the, um, I would say, on the uh, fuel cap door. Uh, we did have some dry areas on the fuel cap door, so I went ahead and uh, highlighted those and then went ahead and resprayed some of those areas where we missed uh, just to make sure that we don't get any dry areas and everything looks nice and uniform. I'm going to go ahead and grab my uh, paint matching light. Uh, it's basically like my version of the 3M sun gun. <laughs> and just go around the areas just to make sure that we got full coverage. I don't think I recorded this uh, second coat. Um, I think I forgot to press record, but I tend to do that from time to time just because I'm so focused on painting. Um, I also noticed that parts of the, the roof on this area, not the roof, but the top part of the quarter panel, seems to uh, got missed some of the edges. And I did notice that my tape was overlapping part of the quarter panel. So I'll point that out in just a second. But basically, um, I grab a little small screwdriver and kind of move the paint over. Um, so that way I can expose the area where there was basically a primer. 
And you could see just in this little corner right here where we had uh, tape overlapping the quarter panel and we go ahead and spray a little bit of uh, red in those areas. Also these lower areas where the quarter panel meets the bumper, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and spray a little bit of base coat in there uh, just to make sure that um, you know even though there's a little bit of a gap, you don't see primer. Uh, also in the uh, light uh, cavity and also this lower part of the quarter panel also needs a little bit of attention as well. All right, so now we're up for our what I believe is going to be our third coat at this point. Like I said, I have trouble remembering to press record sometimes, so uh, we're going to go ahead and start spraying. I'm starting to change uh, where I spray and where I begin to spray as well. I'm also going to go ahead and go to these lower areas and make sure that we have full coverage. Some of the jams looked a little bit dry, so I went ahead and resprayed some of those areas as well and make sure that we get a nice wet edge and uh, we're chasing that wet edge uh, all throughout the car. We want the smoothest layout of our base coat. And um, I just noticed that uh, the jam didn't really look that great um, from the get go. So just go ahead and retouch up those areas. Also um, lay down our base a little bit more wet uh, than the previous coat because I did notice that the base coat was uh, a tad bit dry in some areas. So here's where things kind of go wrong for me. So I ended up running out of paint right there where that quarter panel is at. So I went ahead and mixed up some more paint and put my gun uh, hose back on and began to spray and watch what happens. The gun just spit base coat and it just <laughs> spit dr big old droplets of paint all over that quarter panel. I thought I could fix it by just uh, try to blend in. Uh, some of those droplets with a, a wet coat of uh, base and hoping that uh, it could just kind of blend in. And here I'm kind of just inspecting that area and you could see me nodding my head that things weren't going right from here. So I let the base try to uh, dry up as much as possible because I was planning on still laying another coat of base just to kind of cover this and get it done tonight. Unfortunately, there were so many droplets in the base coat and there was no way I could uh, clear over this because you could just totally see them. Um, so we're going to have to let that base dry and come back. I tried to use some sandpaper to try to sand them out. That's why you see a lot of these marks. Um, but the base coat was just still too fresh to the point where the base coat was kind of sticking to the sandpaper. I'm showing, uh, I'm showing this part of painting because... Not everybody gets to see all the struggles of what it takes to, uh, to paint a car in a garage. And, uh, you know, and this is the real, the real world, realistic uh, problems that happen when painting at home, when things don't go right. What does that look like? Well, it looks like this. Um, and uh, it so happens that one mistake ended up costing me the paint job uh, or at least spraying it tonight and that mistake was um, not checking my pressure and going and shooting that next coat and uh, and not checking my pressure the pressure ended up spraying like around four psi or something like that and all that did was just bleh, all the paint onto the uh, quarter panel and unfortunately, um, there's a lot of paint 
specks or paint drips, uh, not drips, but um, little dots where the paint just spit. And uh, unfortunately with that, I can't paint that. I can't paint over it. Uh, I'm trying to fix it, but uh, it's not looking good. So uh, we're gonna have to let this paint, uh, this base coat sit. And it's uh, not something I wanna do. Uh, especially um, giving it too much time to dry we'll probably end up having to sand most of this base coat to be able to lay down uh, another base on top of it and uh, yeah it's just uh, it's a mess right now it's a mess so yeah this is the real side of uh, YouTube garage paint jobs when they don't go right um, so we will have to uh, we will have to end it tonight. It sucks, I'm sorry to say, but I just can't, I can't, I can't finish tonight. There's just no way. Uh, I don't have enough time, too many problems to fix. It's just gonna have to go back to the drawing board. Alrighty guys, so it's officially the next day. Let's go ahead and take care of that problem area and then hopefully be able to shoot some more base and then finally some clear. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. All right, so now that we let the base coat sit overnight, um, it's hardened enough to the point where we could actually sand it. So what I'm using is a 600 grit on a um, scotch bright pad, and I'm giving a little thumbs up because it's actually working. So we're gonna go uh, sand all the areas that have all those specks of uh, paint and also some dirt nibs as well. And uh, I don't think I show it, but I also went ahead and uh, scuffed the remaining parts of the car. Um, and just to make sure that we have adhesion between our dry base coat and our fresh uh, coats of uh, base that we end up putting on top of this. Um, we do need adhesion. There is a window uh, for this base coat of when you can reapply uh, base and uh, we have superseded that so basically the new coats of base that are going to be on top of this existing base uh, is not going to have enough adhesion um, because we've already sur surpassed that window so we're going to have to scuff the base in order to uh, to get enough adhesion um, for our remaining coats at this point we've gotten all the defects out and we went ahead and scuffed our base um, so now it's ready for um, the remaining coats of base. We have to shoot base over these uh, scratches because if you don't, you're just going to see it right through the uh, right through the clear. I'm also trying to get my heater going so that we can get temperatures up in the 80s. Uh, because it is starting to get a little bit cold, the temperature is dropping. And the reducer that I'm using uh, needs to see 75 to 85 degrees uh, in the... Uh, in the garage so uh, that's why we're having our heater uh, heat up and I let that thing uh, heat up the garage for about an hour and it could it can move it up about five five to eight degrees depending um, on how long I leave that heater on so I'm gonna go ahead and tack real quick and try to get all the dust off um, any sanding uh, base that we sanded uh, could create dust so you want to make sure that you use your tack cloth to pick up any of that remaining uh, dust um, that's on the uh, on the base coat before you lay down another uh, coats of base. All right, so at this point we are ready to spray another coat of base. This is over our all of our sanded areas after we fix some of the defects in the base coat uh, or in the previous uh, coats of uh, of base coat. So going ahead and shooting a medium wet coat. Now we don't have to shoot a lot of coats just because we already have a uh, full coverage from our previous coats, but we do have to spray on top of our sanded areas. The reason being is covering uh, all the sanding scratches and not only that, also getting a even color. If you were to clear over this sanded base coat uh, without shooting another coats of base, you would actually see um, a lot of defects. We also went ahead and uh, after this this coat of base, I did get a little bit of bugs and a little bit of dust landing in these this little small area. 
So I went ahead and just sanded out those areas and then grabbed a tack rag and picked up any remaining dust and then uh, filling up my gun with more base coat um, after it's the base coat had flashed and then go ahead and spray a little bit more base coat. The gun I'm using for base coat is my Techno Pro Light uh, with a TE20 air cap, 1.3 uh, tip. The settings is usually full fan. Um, sometimes I spray full fluid, but in this case, I'm shooting two and a half uh, turns on the fluid. And my pressure is usually around 25 PSI. That's where I like uh, my pressure at with this gun. Seems to lay out the, the base pro pretty nice for the most part. Um, I'm not using the most high-end of uh, materials. I'm using Uricam, um coat of base coat and uh, Wanda clear coat for my clear coat. So I'm just going around painting the remaining parts of the car and getting a nice uh, wet finish or a, a wet coat of paint. I would say more on the medium side than, than full wet, but um, just making sure I'm getting all this, these little small corners and uh, always checking my pressure. It's typically with a small air compressor, you're going to run out of pressure. So you have to constantly keep an eye out on your paint. Um, and also on your pressures. Typically the paint, when you start running lower pressure, you'll start to notice that the, the paint layout is different. So you must uh, change your pressure in order to get that paint to lay out the way you want it to. So this is what our base coat ended up looking like. We're gonna let this sit for a bit and flash off before we get ready for our clear coat stage. At this point, we are ready for our clear coat. We've already let the base flash for about 20 minutes. My settings on the DV1 is three turns on the fluid uh, from fully closed, full fan, and about 21 PSI of pressure. So I'm gonna go ahead and start shooting our clear coat gun. I did notice a couple things might have landed in the first coat of base, uh, sorry, in the first coat of clear, but I just went ahead and said, Let's try to bury that. <laughs> uh, I had no more time to really fix uh, some of those issues. It's already the first coat of clear, so uh, we're gonna have to try to uh, to try to fix that later on um, in our cutting and buffing stage to try to get them out. So let's go ahead and continue on with a medium wet coat of clear coat. So this is what our clear coat is looking like. You guys can see it actually came out pretty decent. I did have something spit out of the gun and you can see a little bit of specs, I think of clear. I'm not quite too sure what, what I exactly spit out of the gun. Seems to always be in that little area for some reason. But uh, anyways, you can see the DV1 clear coat gun does pretty well. Um, it is quite slow, I would say, and it ends up because it's so slow, it ends up using more air uh, than I would like, but I can't complain on the finish. It actually looks pretty nice. So let's go ahead and continue on spraying uh, our second and third coats of clear. Unfortunately, my, my phone ran out of memory, so I couldn't record the second coat of clear, but this is what it ended up looking like. You can see specks of dust have landed in it. Um, this is not really my fault unfortunately but when, once you're in the clear stage there's no tacking or anything of that nature so unfortunately it is what it is and uh but we still are getting a nice finish we do have some problem areas but hopefully we can cut and buff those areas out and still get a decent paint job with a garage paint job you can't seek perfection because there's always going to be something especially when it comes to dust um, that is something that just can't be controlled. No matter how clean of an environment, you're always going to have bits of trash landing in it. And unfortunately, um, that's just nothing really you can do. Um, you can try to fight it, but you are going to get dust. Uh, you can see everything's looking pretty nice at this point. This is our second coat of clear. And uh, we do have a little bit of dryness on the um, on the fuel cap or the fuel door, I should say but uh, we'll try to get that on the last coat of clear. 
So this is the beginning of the third and final stage of clear. Unfortunately, at this point, uh, my phone ends up getting full on its memory. So I wasn't able to fully record a full session. But what I end up doing in this one is starting at a different point because I did notice that I was constantly missing certain port, uh, certain parts of the car. So by changing uh, when I, where I start with the paint job uh, will actually help me in fixing some of those other areas that uh, I keep missing. So I start with this fuel door and then go ahead and start spraying the front of the car and, uh, and getting a wet, uh, a wet coat of clear coat. And uh, well, unfortunately at this point, the memory of the phone ended up getting full, but this is what the third coat of clear looked like. I could only take pictures at this point, unfortunately, but you could see pretty much uh, how it laid out. Came out real nice. There wasn't um, a lot of trash, but there was some some trash. I also brought it outside in order for it to bake the next day. Um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, this is going to be a good turnout for this car. Anyway, guys, I really hope you guys enjoy this video, enjoy watching all the mistakes that I made and how to fix most of them. And uh, that's going to be it for me. I hope you guys enjoy. Stay spraying and catch you guys on the next one.